on Tech News Today, Samsung and Google are teaming up on a hot new phone announcement and probably getting us some ice cream sandwich love as well. Amazon's Silk Browser might be for more than just Kindle Fire. And Facebook may show up at the Apple announcement. All that and more coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Tech News Today with America's number one news team, Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Jason Howell in the newsroom, Sports with I.S. Akhtar, and Burt McQuinn with Weather. This is Tech News Today for Thursday, September 29th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Vast Conference, the ultimate professionalism, clarity, and flexibility for your conference calls, all at a low price. For two Vast Conference calls free with no commitment, go to vastconference.com and use promo code TNT. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. I'm wishing my brother a happy birthday. Yay. Today. And you're also hey. Ayaz. Yes, I'm also Ayaz. And I'm Jason. <laughs> yeah. Whose brother? Oh, you're Ayaz Akhtar. Ayaz Akhtar's brother. <laughs> Happy birthday, Fahad. Uh, yes, this is the show. We kick around the tech news of the day. Uh, thanks, big thanks to Jeff Stewart, who made our, our yeah. intro. He was kind of the, the mastermind behind this whole thing. I feel like we need to have a story about a cat and <laughs> Stuck in a tree. Uh, city council meeting oh, okay. <laughs> and some like overhyped thing about chemicals in your house. And apparently we need a weather segment. Yes, and Burke on weather. Burke, who looked very confused that he is doing the weather. <laughs> and so am I. Where do I sit? What do I do? <laughs> Let's start out with some uh, actual tech news. Uh, Google and Samsung holding an event on October 11th. Uh, they have invited you to Mobile Unpacked 2011. That's down at the CTIA Fall Show uh, in San Diego. Well, they haven't invited you. In fact, they haven't invited me either. They've only invited some of the press. But it looks like we're going to get something involving Google. It's called the Google episode. There's rumors Andy Rubin will show up. So the speculation is we're going to see the Nexus Prime and probably the official unveiling of Ice Cream Sandwich. Well, the timing would be great after everyone's all Apple crazy next week, that the following week, then it's all Ice Cream Sandwich. Ice Cream, ice cream Sandwich. sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know what they should have named it, I'm realizing? Because that almost sounded like Ice Cream Sandwich. Yeah. I think, I think that has a little bit better. I think I might have said Ice Cream Sandwich. I know. Would you like one? It seemed to work for me. <gasps> <laughs> I would, Tom. <laughs> Forget this broccoli I was yeah. eating. Yeah, we don't have to wait for October 11th we here no. ice cream at Tech News today. Here, take Jason one. Oh. We assume the applications will be I'll just grab. like this. Thank you, Chad. And are uh, those are those pretty ever. prime? Are those some prime sandwiches? Well, they're right Klondike. There? They're slightly so. curved, I think, and they have <laughs> a dual bad. core um, mm. chocolate on it. Anyway, excellent. October 11th. It's the biggest Android announcement of the year, probably. Right for Android phone, anyway, not for tablet, but. Absolutely. Are you excited? This is going to make you hold off on your phone purchase. This is what I'm waiting for. This I'm, is what I'm you really, want, right? I'm really waiting to see what the Nexus is all about. And, I mean, even beyond that, I'm waiting to find out for sure that it's going to be on Verizon. If both of those things happen, it's going to take a lot for me to not want to get this. And I'm sure a lot of other people with original droids are kind of in the same position. It's time to upgrade. Now, so this comes out... So if this comes out on the 11th, that means that we'll see ice cream sandwich phones pretty soon thereafter, right? The Nexus usually is the is the the benchmark for all the other phones that follow it, apart from the Droid, right? Yeah, I mean the Droid was before the Nexus project even before began, they ever so. did that Nexus thing. Yeah, this will be the reference model. Yeah, exactly. And usually with these, I mean, the last two times that they've done this, the Nexus, um, Nexus One, the Nexus S, they had that version of of the OS at least one to two months right around there before any other phones did. So, We already have Microsoft fanboys in the uh, chat room criticizing us for not having mangoes last week. Oh. oh we should have, actually. We should have. You know, now that I think about it, that would have been Well, del it's delicious. called 7.5 officially. So. I know, exactly. So we're just following Wait, the rules. I guess Google Android is going to be called 3.0. I guess it's a good thing we're not yeah. covering OS 10 stuff. We have to get a lion in here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a real problem. It's frightening. Apple fanboys really hate us. Why don't you have it's any, show of any big felines? Cats. Yeah. Uh, Google also in the news because the U.S. Department of Justice is making a second request for information about their proposed acquisition of Motorola Mobility. Uh, in a blog posting today, Dennis Woodside from Google said, this is pretty routine. We get these requests all the time. Of course, Wall Street Journal points out, actually only 4% of transactions like this get a second request. 
from the Department of Justice. So it doesn't really happen. I would all almost the time. call this an exception. It apparently happens routine. all the time to Google, though. Mm. Uh, I can see why they would think that because it's happened to them with AdMob, with ITA, with DoubleClick, with the Yahoo Partnership. The Yahoo Partnership is the only one there that actually fell apart. But this is going to delay Google's acquisition of Motorola, and that could affect the patent wars quite a bit. Well, I mean, the DOJ has got to look at this pretty, pretty good. If I have chalk in my teeth, let me know, guys. Uh, mm. We're all on the same boat there. <laughs> anyway, because this is such a big deal with Motorola, it's like has thousands of patents, and Google's when Google does anything, it needs to be looked at uh, quite carefully, especially since there's all this antitrust investigation. DOJ wants to make sure that they are really examining this properly. The thing is. Google buys large things. They get, they get caught every now and then to, with the DOJ to go, hey, you know what? We should look at this. It looks like it'll be proper for us to review again. Because for Google deals, this isn't like 4%. It's almost a norm. Google dominates home markets near monopolistically. So they're going to get investigated every so often. That's a, it's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, so what But could... they're very close to that. I mean, okay, so we're talking about the acquisition of Motorola is significant for Google because it helps their patent uh, portfolio. Portfolio. I was going to say library. Right. Uh, so if this gets delayed, I mean, how can Microsoft, for example, go? I mean, it's that, that's the implication. It just, it's just right? more time in court that, where Google won't have a bunch of Motorola's patents at its disposable disposable at its disposal to throw around. So the people at Microsoft are loving this. Yeah, and Apple as well. And They're Apple. going after Samsung. I think what's going to happen is the Department of Justice is going to ask for some more uh, alterations to the deal. I pray they don't alter it further, but they're going to ask for some guarantees that Android will be on a certain number of platforms at a certain availability, maybe a certain price. Uh, that's what they've done with things like ITA, the ITA deal about travel. They said, well, you have to offer the ITA service to certain customers at a certain price for the next few years, so that you're not uh, you're not over you know you're not over dominating the market. And Google easily agreed to those. I think they'll agree to that with Motorola of Mobility as well. Amazon Silk browser uh, just might not be kept on the Amazon Kindle Fire for long. Of course, Kindle Fire doesn't come out till November 15th. But Amazon has gone on a URL buying spree. Fusible noticed a long list of domains registered through Mark Monitor, a brand protection agency. Uh, so if you if you look at these, they're the kinds of things you would expect, like Kindle Fire sucks. You know, the companies want to buy those kinds of domains so somebody doesn't make a critical... Uh, also misspellings, yeah. Kindle Fry. That, that stuff is as expected. But if you look closely, you see things like silkfortablets.com, silkforpc.com, silkforwindows.com, silkforchrome.com. Uh, OS.com. Like, My favorite is flat out 3G Kindle Fire. That's what I want to see. I don't really, I mean, the Wi Fi version is kind of neat, but a 3G, 3G Kindle Fire, of course, they're going to have that in the long run. But if you go to this site, and we put it, the, the link in the show notes, you can see the hundreds of different uh, variations there are on this thing. Now, uh, just because they register a domain doesn't mean they're going to do a 3G Kindle Fire or even that they're going to do Silk on Safari, but at least indicates that they have the intention of it and they want to protect someone from, from jumping on that domain. Name. Although I think some of these are just hey, we might as well own it instead of that weird third party who's just going to confuse people and keep them from going to Amazon. Yeah, that's true, too. Now, the, the second part of the evidence, though, is, uh, if you look at the privacy policy for Silk, it says if you use Amazon Silk on a Kindle device, your device will automatically send Amazon Silk crash reports to Amazon. You may choose to send these reports when using Amazon Silk on other devices. Uh -huh. Like what? Like what other devices? There's only one device you can use Silk on. So that that's a giveaway, right? That sounds like boilerplate to me. I mean, they have the Amazon Kindle you mean app. Boilerplate on, for what? There's Kindle apps on on there's for your PC. There's the one on on BlackBerry. There's one on iOS, Android. Those are devices that exist. And if it crashes, you can send it back data. Or not. So you're saying they but just took the Amazon. language from the apps and copied it over? Just, yeah, I think mm. they have a form document. I mean, if you look at even, yeah, I, we've gotten letters about mm. this, but why does the Apple uh, OS 10 license say that you shouldn't use it in a, in a nuclear plant? It's like, it's just boilerplate. All their, all their things have that, including iTunes. I don't know why you would run a nuclear plant with iTunes, but apparently just Iran boilerplate does. stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a playlist, how to make no. sure to keep cool. It's a special Siemens distribution of iTunes. Well, they're, they're protected because it's in the boilerplate language. And I'm pretty sure with, with the Silk, right now it's boilerplate. But for it to not be...
put on other uh, other devices is kind of crazy. They have to do this. They want to be, um, you know, track you and sell this aggregate data in the long so run. So what you're saying, Iaz, is that neither of these things is actually not, dead on indication that they're going to put Silk on other devices. I'm saying nothing is determinative right now. Yeah, all so, right. Sorry. Right. Sadly. Well, but so why would I, let's just say okay. that there's let's an Amazon Silk browser that I can install to run on my MacBook mm -hmm. here. Mm-hmm. How is that going to help Amazon since I'm not within their ecosystem on one of their devices? I mean, are they going to run Amazon ads around the borders? Well, I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, how I, would that be good besides the fact that it might be fast? I think the same way that Chrome helps Google, right? Yeah. When you think about it, how does, how does Chrome help Google? Well, it's got the Google search engine where they can sell ads. It gets you to use Google products where they can sell you ads. So you don't put ads in Chrome, yeah. but you use it to kind of push people towards using your services. Amazon could do the same thing with Silk. That and Silk's supposed to track where you're clicking all the time. They want to tell that. Right, and, that, that and the more over. data they have, the better Silk works. Exactly. Right. That's true, too. All right. This episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by Vast Conference. If you're like most of us, you would like to be professional in what you do, uh, or at least, you know, have people think you're professional, especially if you're in business. And when you think about it, professionalism begins with conference calls. Conference calls, uh, sad, sad to say, conference calls are an essential part of business. So you want to make them the least painless thing you can do because you have to have them. You want a clear connection. You want uh, the ability to manage large calls, lots of participants. See who's on the call, who isn't on the call. Uh, be able to, you know, mute people so that the right person can talk and then unmute so you can take questions. Uh, conference calls at Vast Conference can have several participants, up to 300 callers at once. So it's not limited to three to five uh, participants. You quickly connect. You give out a regular dial-in number uh, and a toll-free number. And then that's all. You just give them that in a code, and they call. You don't have to give them any fancy setup stuff. You don't have to go through installing anything on their machine, but you can control the call from your computer and even record it. Um, record any call instantly as an MP3 with no special equipment. It's two and a half cents per minute for regular calls, six cents per minute for 800 numbers calls. You decide whether to give out a regular call in number or the toll free number. Sign up is fast and easy, and you only pay for the calls you host. Vast is giving our audience an exclusive two business calls free. That's up to 300 minutes to give you a chance to try out the service. It's, you know, 300 minutes is two calls by five callers by 30 minutes. So an average of five person people on a conference call, 30 minutes, that's 300 minutes because you pay per caller per minute. Go to vastconference.com, sign up for a free account. It's fast and easy. They'll give you a toll-free number to use, and you can start using that for conference calls right away. And be sure to use that promo code TNT to get the 300 free minutes so you can try it out. Next conference call you do. I had a conference call yesterday. Easy. Give them the phone number. Give them the number they're on. Don't have to worry about it. Check it out. Vastconference.com. Use that code TNT. We thank them for their support of Tech News Today. I wasn't invited to that conference call. Well, it wasn't about you. Oh. Or... It totally was. And that's why you weren't allowed on the call. <laughs> no, it was, uh, yeah, it was only about what you. What is to be done with that Sarah it not, Lane? It was not to you. It was about you. It's no, it we wasn't. didn't record it, but we could have. Now you've made it awkward. Well, good. Sorry I asked. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, Microsoft patent payout. Goldman Sachs estimated Microsoft makes in total $444 million annually off Android. That's right. Uh, because of these patent licenses that Microsoft has been able to negotiate, OEMs are paying Microsoft between 3 to $6 per device. Uh, and estimating the number of Android devices that will be sold between July 1st and June 30th, 2012... July 1st this year and June 30th, 2012, uh, and considering that HTC, Acer, General Dynamics, Itronics, Onkyo, Velocity Micro, ViewSonic, Wistron, and Samsung now all have patent deals, they think Microsoft's going to make $444 million. That compared to the $74.5 billion in revenues this year made from the Yahoo deal. So, so it, they're it not sounds, making that much off of Android. But it still sounds, as by itself, $404 million sounds pretty big. But this, this number isn't necessarily even a real number, right? This is It's an estimate, right? In fact, Florian Mueller from Foss has taken uh, some, some issue with it. He says it's like reading tea leaves. He points out that Barnes & Noble claimed that Microsoft was demanding more for Android royalties than it was charging for Windows Phone 7. We don't have an actual number for a Windows Phone 7 license, but the estimate is that it's 8 to $15 per device. So if you take those numbers into account, then Microsoft is making much more than 3 to $6 per device. But even if you double that, they're only making $888 million. So it's still less than a billion dollars compared to the $74.5 billion they make from Yahoo. They're not making a lot on Android. It seems like the deal here is that they're getting these patent licenses and then getting people to agree to market Windows Phone. So do you think these patents are, in Google's words, stifling innovation? The fact that they're getting paid for this and they're licensing their things out, is this really stopping anything from happening or is this just money flowing 
one way to another. I mean, it, it's not that big a deal. They're getting 440. I mean, it's stifling innovation it's, if you were, I don't know. I mean, if you didn't have the kind of money to pay Microsoft a, 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 a portion of whatever your profits were. I mean, if you were a smaller company who was trying to start a handset business. Which there's a lot of those. Uh, hey, there aren't any because nobody can afford it. That, oh, that's I don't, my that point. I, I, I mean, the whole patent system may or may not be stifling innovation. That's a big question that's bigger than this story. I, I think the, the key here is that Microsoft is using this to leverage up a little more interest in Windows Phone 7. They're saying, look... You know, you pay us uh, 5 or $10 uh, per license. You agree to our patents. They seem to be very good at getting these deals. Mm -hmm. uh, they get them all the time. And then you're going to market our Windows phones. It's like what Samsung said the other day. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, we have Windows Phone 7. We love it. And uh, here's our cross-license. Melvin Chua, very... HTC's manager in Singapore, said, We believe that Windows Phone 7 will eventually be better than other platforms and will give Android a run for its money saying Windows Phone 7 makes up 30% of HTC sales. His hand was, like, behind his back when he gave <laughs> the quote. I think Windows Phone 7 soft is great. Employee is in like, all fairness, HTC just introduced, you know, a Mango phone the other day. I mean, it, it, we, we talked about it on this show. They've, they've been working with, like, Microsoft, uh, Android, and whatever operating system they get their hands on. They, they, they're also like Samsung. They'll just put out anything because they want to, they want to basically have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, market dominance. It's not about the operating system for them. And then it's, again, they came out with the Mango phones. They're going to say, buy them. They're great. But then I'm sure Microsoft kind of told them to. Right. Yeah. In fact, Microsoft is, is making them do it. They're, they're striking deals, uh, apparently, and saying, you know what? You don't want to get dragged into court for a patent lawsuit? You're going to sell Windows phones. You will say what we say. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna love them. You're going to swallow this Windows phone. You're going to love it. Frankly, Windows Phone 7.5 is a good operating system, so it's not a hard sell. But... I, you know, I think Microsoft is using their patent library to leverage marketing favors, put it that way. It's also interesting to see, and I know these numbers might be off a bit, but in the, you know, half a billion that they might rake in from Android, comparing to the, the huge, what was it, 74.5 uh, revenue just from the Yahoo deal, it's like, I mean, Microsoft would have to lay off a lot of people to become just a patent troll that was, like, up and running. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I don't think anybody's saying Microsoft's a patent troll here, but it, it definitely uh, is, is, is impressive yes. how they're able to go and strike these deals. And, and as we mentioned earlier, Google's not going to be able to combat this. Because uh, until they get Motorola, and even then, I don't know if they'll be able to combat it. But you know, Microsoft's holding off they're this waiting. negotiation yeah, with Motorola until Google takes over. Because if they think, you know what? Because what the difference is, Microsoft is not going in and trying to crush people the way Apple is trying to crush Samsung. That, in fact, there's a report today that Steve Jobs actually tried to stop Apple and Samsung from ending up in court, and those negotiations broke down. And so this is not playing out the way he wanted it to play out. Uh, Microsoft is saying, look, we're, we're, we're ready to make a deal. With, let's not go to court. Uh, and I think their lawyers probably are slobbering at the chance to strike a deal with Google uh, and take a piece out of Google that will help them. Now, to be fair, most businesses are trying to avoid court in general. They want to have a licensing agreement that, that money is going one hand to the other. Uh, when it comes to Google, I mean, Microsoft waiting for Google, that's probably what they're waiting for. They already have Samsung and HTC. And again, if Samsung's and HTC's attorneys couldn't figure out a way around these patents, I don't know what Google's team's going to be able to do. So whatever they have is, is, is pretty, like, pr must be airtight at this point comparatively to what Apple has with Samsung. I mean, they probably tried to negotiate that. That didn't work out so well because... And micro, I'm, I, I'm forgetting that Microsoft and Motorola are already in court. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what, what is over, but they, you know, that, that's sort of simmering on the back burner as well. Yeah, so I'm, do you think that uh, Google and Microsoft will partner up with for some kind, oh, kind gosh, of cloud no. services? No, no, they won't partner up. But, but Microsoft will wring some kind of concession out of Google. Uh, and, you know, the way these things are supposed to work is that both sides end up coming away feeling victors. Uh, HTC, victims. HTC and Samsung, I'm not sure how victorious they feel coming away from these things, but they agreed to it, so they, they must feel like they're getting something out of it. Maybe it's just not going to court. I don't know. Alexia Satsis over at TechCrunch found screenshots of Facebook's HTML5 apps project. That's the one people refer to a lot as Project Spartan. Uh, and apparently it's been done for a while, according to an MG Siegler report. Uh, and Facebook is just waiting on the iPad app to launch before they launch Project Spartan. Project Spartan would allow them to have an app store with all the apps built on HTML5. The reason the iPad app hasn't launched, according to MG's report, is that 
they're actually waiting for Apple to announce the iPad app at the Apple announcement on Tuesday. Now, Mashable reports that there's some back and forth on this, uh, that there's actually some negotiations, and there's actually a possibility that Facebook may do their own announcement about the iPad app this Monday if they can't agree with how the iPad app would be announced on Tuesday. Wow, just, is that just too just much work? Announce just announce the, the damn app. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everyone wants it. Why... <sighs> It seems really unnecessarily rumory. You're overthinking it, everyone. Everybody. It's just an app. <laughs> Launch it. I don't understand why it'd be tied to their own HTML5 applications as well. I mean, okay, so if Facebook has their own iPad app, they won't release the iPad. They won't release their own Project Spartan until the iPad app is. They want to have the iPad app so that you can download the apps from Project Spartan into the iPad app and play them. So the app has mini guess. apps inside of it. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just like, like for instance, the Atari app is full of every game Atari ever played, and you download them inside there. But then the whole idea of P Project Spartan is to circumvent apps altogether and be able to run these apps within the HTML5 experience. Yes, that is true, so on, it's on, like, on the browser. Right. So maybe it's just a promotion thing. Maybe or, they just know. said, listen, we, we want everything to launch together or people will get confused. And then when, it, and when everything does launch... Uh, in sync, then it's like, you have your choice. You can play apps this way or you can play apps this if way. If you want to convert somebody from using apps to using uh, Project Spartan web apps, you got to go where they, where they use apps, and that would be in the iPad app. That's right. Makes sense to me. Also, uh, uh, Facebook against the wall, 10 public interest groups asking the U.S. Federal Trade Commission to investigate Facebook's tracking of Internet users after they log off. That's the so-called super cookie. Uh, they also asked them to examine whether Facebook's new ticker and timeline features boost privacy risks for users. Facebook responded saying, uh, our cookies aren't used for tracking. They just aren't. Instead, we use our cookies to either provide custom content your friends' likes within a social plugin, for example, help improve or maintain our service or protect our users and our service. So if you believe Facebook, don't worry about that super cookie. We know it's there, but it's not tracking you, we promise. So is there a, is there a plate of super cookies? Or Yeah, I know. Where's our uh, plate? Super, super cookies. Super cookie courier? Come? No? Okay. Super Maybe we could just have more ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> I think they're all gone. Oh. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, are you worried about the super cookie? Do you trust Facebook on this? At this point, I mean, like, I think everything's tracking me already. And I kind of like it because the ads are really, really targeted at this point. You know, from furnishing my house. I'm, I'm tracked like, and I like it. Yeah, I'm the only guy. I'm like, hey, look, modern furniture. I like modern furniture. And, and why is this on this particular site? Yeah, it's like I if, you're going, if you're going to be advertised to, it might as well be somewhat relevant. That's okay. kind of the way I feel, too. Well, I think and one just, one just part of it is you control what information goes into Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, you, Facebook should be upfront about what they are doing with your information, how they store it, and what they use it for. And the super cookie thing was definitely over the edge. If they say they're not using it to track you, then I guess they're not, and that's fine. But... If you don't trust them and you're like, you know what, I don't like the idea that they were storing it at all, even if they weren't storing it on their own servers. I don't like them storing it on my desktop without my knowledge. Stop using them. Or use them with very limited information. Don't let them have access to or your just information. just access Facebook through like a private browser and then close that out. Make yeah. sure that oh, there's lots cached. of ways. Yeah. There's ways, to, ways around that. I mean, I, or just stop using Facebook entirely, which some people sounds crazy. But like I know for a while when Plus came out, I wasn't on Facebook for like, like a month. You know, there are, there are uh, people who, you know, Facebook defectors, anytime something like this comes up. Uh, if you want to close down your Facebook account, yeah, they make it sort of a, a hassle, but you can do that. For the rest of us, it, yeah, it's just, it's good to know uh, how your information is being stored. Don't use your real birthday. Um, you know, I mean, Sarah uses her real birthday in Facebook. I think that's a mistake because uh, a lot of people don't know that you're 100 until they see that. Well... The secret's out. I just really want a big cake for my 100th birthday in yeah. a few weeks. And then you can change it back to the fake. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good for 100. Thank you. Well, I'm 99. I'm not 100 yet. Not yet. All right. So. Sorry. Stepping over the line <laughs> there. Just, you know, come on. Colin Stewart, analyst John Vinn. Colin Stewart is the analyst company. John Vinn is the actual analyst. Uh, said in a note, we believe RIM has stopped production of its playbook and is actively considering exiting the tablet market, uh, to which RIM spokeswoman Marissa Conway said, rumors suggesting that the BlackBerry playbook is being discontinued are pure fiction. 
RIM remains highly committed to the tablet market and the future of QNX in its platform. Uh, two weeks ago, RIM said they plan to show updated software to the Playbook. RIM uh, Playbook Software 2.0 is supposed to come in at an October analyst conference. Updates would finally add email as a native app, among other things. Playbook price cuts have arrived in the U.S. today, though, right after the Amazon Kindle Fire. The crazy thing is that when, when RIM was rumored to get rid of the uh, playbook, the stock was doing okay. When they confirmed that they are continuing the playbook, the stock dropped. So people are apparently like, why are you still doing this? Stop. We were so happy with the idea that you would be stopped doing this thing. Other than the fact that it can be confused for a, a Kindle Fire, that was well, the other thing. I'm like, you, yeah. Best Buy should be hanging on to these things. Well, you know how you tell thing. the difference? I one is my, 200 and one is 300. I have my Kindle Fire right here. Look at that. Thing. It's <laughs> beautiful. It's magnificent. It comes with a BlackBerry logo on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has well, more we're, we're burying the lead here, though. I, 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 I didn't finish my sentence, I guess. Uh, playbook price cuts have arrived, mm -hmm. and they have gone from $400 to $300 for 499 16 gigs. To two, uh, to I'm sorry, 499 yeah, to two, So a $300 price cut of the 16 gigabyte, uh, that's a, no, it's a, from 499 to 200 is a $200 discount. So this is only $100 more than the Kindle Fire. And you get a camera with it. Okay. And you get more For hundred dollars more, you more get storage. you get you get a camera. Twice, you have GPS. Twice the you have storage, two cameras right? actually. You have a front and a rear facing. Two cameras. And you have, uh, sixteen gigs instead of eight gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, you get more Smash ports, port. I think. SD card. It's got the ability this, to run yeah. Android apps, right? Uh, limited ability. To uh, run limited ability, ability, ability to run Android apps. 3G capability. Um, no. no. Okay. It's Wi-Fi only. Yeah. yeah. But you get these incre incredible multitasking where you can play videos. I don't, and, does that I don't know where you get the videos because there's no store. That really is the big <laughs> difference. This thing, when I was playing with it last night, actually. Can it run the Silk I, browser? I, it does not Maybe run eventually. the Silk browser. <laughs> eventually. Maybe one day. I was playing with it last night and I realized, you know what? This still is an excellent piece of hardware and the QNX operating system is fantastic. And the problem with the BlackBerry Playbook is I don't know where to get content. There's an MP3 store in here that's awful. There's no video store. It's got a great video player, but I don't have any way to get videos legitimately. There's no video store. I'd have to go, you know, it's at least not easily right. uh, get videos that I can import on here and play. The playback uh, is is gorgeous on this thing. I mean, it does it does really good looking video. So this means to me Amazon wins because they've got basically the same hardware and they have the content and that's what it's all about. Yeah, a friend of mine was asking me, should I get the playbook considering it's since the fire is very close to it? I'm like, no. There's, there's really no app support. The limited Android capability that it's going to have sounded really cool at first, but then uh, there was news that it will not be able to use like text-to-speech. You can't use uh, Google Maps on that thing. Any apps that use Google Maps will not be able to use that. So it, became, it just became this kind of dead end street, like well, the playbook. It's too bad. Also, if you if there's not a really great way to get videos and things that take up a lot of space, you don't really care about that extra storage. And I mean, how many pictures have you taken with that playbook? Yeah, it's got a couple of cameras. Um, you can take pictures, but is that really going to be something that you're like definitely want to spend a hundred more dollars to have right. less content and have the ability to take more pictures? Sounds on like that. a good deal. Hundred more bucks. I took less this stuff. really grainy video of my dog. You can, you can barely... Well, there you go. Who'd that. want a fire now? Yeah, yeah can't clearly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the news, Hughes. <laughs> Goodbye, last hope of Mac clones. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed a ruling that Psystar... Remember Psystar? Oh, they're yeah. the folks that are like, we paid for OS X, we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, Psystar called its machine Open Max and argued that a person should be able to do anything they want with it. Uh, the court said no. A person buys a license to the operating system, and that license has restrictions. Now, it wasn't a total victory for Apple, though. The appellate court said the lower court erred in allowing Apple to seal documents uh, related to the case because when it comes to court documents, there is a strong presumption of access. So you'll get to mull over all those court documents and see if there's any telling details from Apple. Well, the Samsung-Apple patent battle continues to rage on, and T-Mobile has submitted a court filing supporting Samsung. Yes, old Timo said the ban on Samsung products would unnecessarily harm T-Mobile and all of its customers. So here's a hint for T-Mobile. Since you want to get the iPhone so badly, you probably don't want to tick off Apple in court.
Good move, T-Mobile. According to the Wall Street Journal, Nokia is developing a new operating system for low-end phones called Meltemi, or Meltemi, I don't know how to say it. The, chi the cheap OS will be based on Linux. Windows Phone will still power most phones in the Nokia lineup. Uh, Meltemi seems to be aimed at replacing super cheap Series 40-based phones, which dominate the emerging markets. So if you're keeping track, Nokia ditched both Symbian and Mego to partner up with Microsoft and then wanted to make another operating system. Yeah, but this is, the, everybody's making a big deal about that, but this is a very low-end operating system that Microsoft doesn't make. It's just serving a market it's that Microsoft on doesn't there. serve. So I, No, Symbian, actually, Series 40 is what you should put on there, and I think Series 40 has hit a wall. So this Tango's is working. this is replacing Series 40, which needed to be replaced, in my opinion. The iPhone 5 announcement is coming up in less than a week, so this is the last call. For sketchy information, <laughs> an executive from China Unicom, a carrier of the iPhone, said that the next iPhone will have HSPA Plus so that you can download things at a speed of 21 megabits per second and call it 4G if you want, even though it's not. There's even a China Unicom slide floating around the Internet that says the same thing. Uh, what does that mean for the United States? Well, even though iPhone 5 is rumored to land on Sprint, only AT&T... Uh, and actually T-Mobile, have an HSPA Plus network, but T-Mobile's already said we're not getting the iPhone. So uh, maybe that AT&T phone will have an advantage. Who knows? Got some good news, and I've got some bad news. Uh, and it all depends on who you are at Nokia. The bad news first. If you worked at Nokia's manufacturing facility in Romania in its supply chain or its commerce and location business, you might be out of a job by the end of the year. Sorry. Nokia is going to cut 3,500 jobs across those divisions. But there is good news. If you're a Nokia shareholder, Nokia's stock price increased on this news. Harsh. Yeah. H Very HP harsh. might have fired Leo. Pharmacist. Apotheker. Apotheker. Whatever you guys just said. Because of Larry Ellison, Bloomberg reports HP was worried about the stock price falling low enough that Oracle could perform an unsolicited buyout. Although other sources tell Bloomberg Oracle had no immediate plans to acquire HP. Shares of HP were $42 when Leo took over and fell to $23 the day he was ousted. Shares are still around $24, so it doesn't seem to be working. No, it doesn't. Good Sorry, luck, Meg. Meg. That Kindle Fire looks super expensive next to India's $35 tablet. Hey. A low-cost tablet will be available to students and is launching next Wednesday, October 5th. Human Resource Development Minister Kapil Sibal said this is not just a dream, it is a reality. The tablet has been delayed several times, but we'll see next week if this finally is the real deal of the sub-$100 tablet. If you're one of those people who was like, near-field communication is just not really very useful, uh, it's about to get more useful. A new spec by the NFC Forum standardizes a way to share data between machines in a peer-to-peer -peer mode called Simple NDEF Exchange Protocol. It's actually simpler than the name. The spec means that you would need a special app to exchange data. Your NFC device would just be able to share right away. So it would auto-allow devices from d different manufacturers to work together easily, a lot like Bluetooth. The Financial Times says its HTML5 app has over 700,000 subscribers and has decided to pull its iPad and iPhone apps from the Apple App Store. FT had made the HTML5 site to avoid paying Apple a cut of its subscri subscription fees. The mobile version of the site accounts for 15% of FT.com's subscriptions. That is, that is crazy. So they, they kept the app in there and just removed the subscription link. And now they're like, you know what? HTML5 works fine. Mm -hmm. We can we can just go without. And honestly, I don't think Apple really cares. Everyone's like, ah, but the way they want to make all this money off the app, they don't make their money so much on the app store as they make it on selling the phones. So whatever sells phones, they're going to be all for. Uh, it'll be interesting. I don't get the sense that a lot of co companies are rushing to do the same thing as the Financial Times. The Financial Times is something pretty risky to do that. But they made it work. And so if the developers at these other companies can do the same thing. Well, it's just, I guess it's, how many companies have to follow the Financial Times model before Apple gets upset? It's more complicated, too. It's like you have to develop the HTML5 app, right. teach users how to put it on the desktop, make mm -hmm. a big campaign to tell them. It's a lot easier to just make your app and put it in the App Store. Yeah. I, I think that's what, probably what's going to happen. Let's move on to the randomizer. Randomizer. BBC reports on the development of self-healing materials. Researchers at the University of Illinois have found a way to pump healing fluids around a material like the circulation of blood. Materials that can repair themselves as they crack would have uses, of course, in civil engineering and construction. Who doesn't want a bridge that stops itself from cracking in half and falling down? Uh, different approaches have been taken to creating these materials in the past, depending on the kind of material that needs to be repaired. Uh, but new developments in self-healing technology have been pioneered by Professor Nancy Sados and her team at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Go Illini! 
uh, involving the impregnation of plastics with a fine network of channels, each less than 100 millionth of a meter in diameter that can be filled with liquid resins. So it's a microvascular network, just kind of moves through the material. How quickly does it self-heal? Because every time I cross the Golden Gate Bridge, I think, you know, if the big one hit and this bridge... On a crack? When a crack appears, a constant pressure drives the fluid into the cracks. So, so instantaneous. Basically like instantane a human. Yeah, right. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> a living bridge. What's that? You want to be driving across a living bridge I effectively? I sure do. If Put it means that it's going to live. In the bridge. No more construction woes. I mean, they need to do this with the roads. That's what I want. I want roads that you never need to. You, know, you could do it with the roads, too. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But then the no unions would have our heads. Right. Their heads. I don't really. You know, everybody makes that joke. Honestly, I don't think the union would be upset about this. Let's Can ask the union. <laughs> Those potholes. No vascular themselves. networks. No <laughs> self-healing potholes. No <laughs> self-healing potholes. They're gonna yell about the scabs that are the. Potholes. Oh. Uh, I get it. Scabs. That's funny. No. Let's move on to the not. calendar. Transformers Dark of the Moon Blu-ray is dropping like a big old robot tomorrow, September 30th. It's not the 3D version, though, so if you wanted that, uh, that one actually doesn't have a release date yet. If you're into 2D, then you get it tomorrow. Starting Monday, October 3rd, Microsoft is going to drop the price of a Zoom Pass to $9.99. That's down from $14.99, so $5 savings. But you won't be able to download 10 free songs a month anymore. That one's getting the cut. The new service is going to be live in the U.S. and, for the first time, in Canada. Yay, Canada. Go also Canada. on Monday, uh, HP's deal with autonomy should close. That's according to an autonomy spokesperson. So they, you got till tomorrow for uh, Meg Whitman to put her stamp on this deal, huh? Right. <laughs> There's a rumor that you're going to see an update to the Xbox dashboard on November 15th. Maybe then we'll finally get that stupid ability to buy TV from Comcast and Verizon on your Xbox and people can stop continuously reporting that no, rumor. I think it's actually more Connect support for the menus. Well, it could be both of those things. No. And finally, in January 2012, Star Trek The Next Generation is coming to Blu-ray. The whole series is going to be remastered in 1080p and 7.1 audio, which I know makes you happy. I'm thrilled about that. Picard you're, you're shot like first. Dude. I like the audio. No. Well, the thing is, it was shot on film. And yeah. so instead of getting the 4.3 versions you can get right now in DVD, you'll get... 16.9. No, the no, they should ha intended. be true to the originals and only put them out in 4.3. I'm tired no, of them the, messing with the legacy. That's Star Wars. And making... This is Star Trek. Oh, no, oh That's sorry. fine. Okay. We, at Star right. Trek, people like it's to improve things. Right, right. Never mind. I, 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 I was confused. They're also recompositing the I effects. I see where, where you got confused. Yeah, I, 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 I've said apolog I apologize for that. All right, good. Let's move on to incoming. That's so fast. <laughs> we need something. Yeah, I know. I'm still, I'm still <laughs> That's worried. That's there for now. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's start with a voicemail, with, which has some uh, interesting concerns regarding the speed of the Silk browser on Amazon. Hey, Tom and everyone. This is just uh, a wee point about the EC2 and Silk browser coming from D here in uh, Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, so you've got a fantastically well-connected data center called EC2 and it goes to the internet over fiber optic and every page you request goes via EC2 and they get it nice and fast and press it and give it to you. However, your connection to EC2 still goes over your broadband and your copper into EC2. So no matter how fast EC2 connects to the internet, you've still got that bottleneck. While they can still technically compress everything and get it down that slow portion to you, really is that going to be faster in every instance than just going directly than going via the middleman? I want to get a two so the browser side by side and do a speed test. Unfortunately, I'm in the UK. I can't. So that we have to rely on you to tell us the results on that one. But uh, I'm really interested to see the actual result. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, he was running that through the Amazon Silk browser. It came by he was fast. talking so fast. furious. Yeah. Fair, fair point. That a lot there, of information you know, in there. But, yeah. but even <laughs> consider what he said, it's going to be faster on one end and not on the other. That still overall makes it faster. Because when I'm in a Safari browser... It's slow on one end all the way to being slow on my end, or at least slower than Silk, theoretically. And the other thing uh, is... So, so even if it's slow from Silk to you, it's sped up the rest of it. And I think you're going to say about that, compression? Yeah, well, I was going to say the other thing is it's also doing that whole prefetching thing, too. So if, you, it's, if it's predicting where you're going to click on the page and it's pre-rendering, it's going to be able to give you that page faster because they've done the work already on the other end, and they're not just putting it together just for you right now. No, it's still a fair point. How much faster is all that going to be? The fact is we're really sensitive to seconds when loading web pages. Uh, right. people, people get really excited when web pages show up a second faster is a lot, like even tenths of a second faster. People, people go, ooh, that's snappy. So, 
It doesn't have to be that much faster to, to make an impression on people, I don't think. But then right now for Silk, it's only on Wi-Fi, so it'll be kind of fast anyway, but it really seems like the future of Silk is on other 3G and other wireless devices. So that's where you want the speed. I think things are faster on Wi-Fi. That's what I'm saying. Like for when it's on, when it, once you go to 3G, oh, when you, once you move off of Wi-Fi, well, but Silk is going to appear slower on 3G than it is on Wi-Fi mm -hmm. because you're going to be used but to. But it the might look faster than other 3Gs. Yeah. On uh, to the email, TNT at twit.tv. Joop writes in and said, "What I find funny is that everybody was complaining about the lack of features of the iPad: no USB, no memory card, etc. Compared to Android, but now with the Kindle Fire, everybody is suddenly all excited, and it has." even fewer features than the original iPad. Oh, ye humans. He spelled it with a G, though. Ye humans. Ye humans. Well, I mean, I guess you've got a point, but... This is why it's, it's dangerous to make fanboy arguments, because eventually the company you love is going to do the same thing that the company you were hating on does, uh -huh. and if it's a good thing, everybody's going to think it's a good thing. And my wife was like, well, the, the Fire doesn't have a camera on it. I'm like, well, your iPad 1 doesn't have one either, and you don't seem to mind. She's like, right. Mm, I didn't think of that. But I also feel like the, mm, the iPad was always marketed as a this is a post-PC era device kind of thing. Like, you can pretty much do everything that you could do before, just yes. going to be in a different way. But it's limited. I don't know that the Kindle Fire is trying to be any of that. No, it's, it's just trying saying, to be a consumption device. Exactly, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazon's going to make it as easy for you as possible to do some of the things you love to do. And it's a lot cheaper. And that too. Yeah. So how could it have all that stuff? So you can't put away the fanboy arguments. It is, well, you, no one will ever will put away the fanboy arguments. That's fair to say. Next email from Kieran Blackwell. Hey, TNT people. I, lo I live in the UK and I have to deal with some of the same package-based television selection you were talking about in TNT 338. That was yesterday's show. We have so many combinations available from Sky or Virgin Media. But in the end, I've just lived without channels like FX and Discovery HD. It's all too expensive. And we desperately wait for better cord cutting options to arrive to these ye old lands. I, so it just goes to show that these, these so-called a la carte plans are not going to be as good as we would like them to be. Right. Last email from Rich in lovely Cleveland. He's written in a lot. Tom and Posse, I was going over more of the Amazon coverage from yesterday, and one thing stood out to me. Amazon said WhisperSync would work for TVs and movies. Uh, TV shows, I guess, and movies. But ultimately, they are not controlling the experience of those two outside of the Kindle Fire. Do you think Amazon would be in the market to acquire Roku to fill this void? Hmm. It seems like a logical acquisition. It's a company with a devoted, if small, user base and has hardware and software on par with the best. All, of, all it's wait, uh, waiting for is a big name like Amazon to really promote it. Amazon has a su successful history of acquiring companies that consumers love, like Zappos and Woot, and not losing that consumer goodwill after purchase. What do you think? Ah, that's interesting. It'd be the first time they acquired such a consumer-facing hardware vendor. I believe they've acquired hardware vendors before, but but not somebody that sells a product to the consumer the way the Roku does. That would be great for Roku. I don't think because of the Amazon Kindle Fire, I don't think that they would do it. The other thing is, I think they're 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 seeing the Fire as their strategy. Uh, for getting you to use their consumption, although they are missing the television with that device. So mm -hmm. it could fit in. It could fill in a spot and be the, the Kindle, t you know, Kindle TV. But does, does Amazon need a dedicated box at all? I mean, the fact is Roku already has Amazon Instant Video. TiVo yeah. does. Some televisions have it. I think they have a list. Amazon's already on there. Why right, they're they, on 300 devices. That's buy, what they've said publicly. They just need to promote Roku more and... They would get more out of it that well, way. They don't really care. As long as you them. buy it through Amazon.com at the end of the day, they have a big promotion page for that right now. So I don't know if they would go out and buy a piece of hardware. I mean, they could, I could see them doing OEM, like doing their own, not bothering to pick up another company because, the, the, I mean, the, uh, the Fire is their own device as well. Yeah, uh, it's an intriguing thought, though. Uh, I, I, my guess is they wouldn't want to do it. They wouldn't see enough advantage in it uh, yet. Yeah, I would think that they'd want something that's more of the entire Amazon experience. I mean, Amazon Instant Video is great, and yes, you can get that on Roku, but you'd think if Amazon were to acquire it, it would be more of a, and you can shop, almost more like a Google TV type of a thing. Yeah. Hey, big thanks to everybody in our Reddit. Technewstoday.reddit.com is the place to go to submit stories that you would like to hear us talk about on the show. Big thanks to PC Guy 8088, White Hat TX, Traconos, Canuck, uh, Sci Spud, Mac Bytes, Flash Cider, SA Jewers, and more. Go to technewstoday.reddit.com and make your voice heard on what we talk about on the show. Uh, thanks to you for watching. You can find us on the web, twit.tv slash TNT.
is the website address. You can email us, TNT at twit.tv, or give us a call. Our phone number is 260-TNT-SHOW. Randall Bennett joins us on the show tomorrow. Mm. Sarah and Darren are both out, so we'll miss you guys. You, you just don't come in on Fridays anymore, do you, Sarah? I go to weddings professionally. Right, and I, I, you have a new job. <laughs> You're very good at that. Yeah. So we'll see you Monday and see everybody else tomorrow. Bye, folks.